Well, hey everybody, this is Bill with iRide Tiny House Adventures. How are y'all doing today? Uh, I really didn't intend on shooting a video today because the wind is blowing a little bit, but there's something that came up that uh, we thought we, it might be important for us to show you right quick just to, uh, to give you a little bit of information in case something like this was never happened to you. And I'm sure that uh, something like this has happened to you in the past if you've been to a campsite and been plugged into a service pole. But uh, first, though, before we get into that, let me show you where we are. Uh, give you kind of a panoramic view here. We're at a campground on Beaver Lake uh, next to the dam. And our campsite is on a peninsula that kind of sticks out into the water. And let me give you kind of a panoramic view here right quick. Spin around over here. And you can see the water right there. Let me back up a little bit. Show you how we're positioned here with the, with the trailer. There we go. Deb's sitting over there at the picnic table. And uh, let me show you. Let me walk right over here. We're on a beautiful spot. It's just really, really beautiful here. And of course, this is what uh, what we have just outside the door of the trailer, <laughs> right here. I know it's tough. The only thing uh, that's been a little uh, disheartening about the whole thing is we've had uh, you know quite a bit of wind, just quite a bit of wind. And usually, in this part of Arkansas, we don't have this much wind consistently every day. But uh, we're dealing with a little bit of wind here this week. And, of course, it has to do with a major system that is uh, just north of us. In fact, I just looked at the radar a little bit ago. We're not too far as the crow flies from Joplin, Missouri. And this is Sunday morning. And it shows that they're getting a pretty healthy thunderstorm right now. But, uh, and then we also saw in the news that uh, El Reno, Oklahoma, got hit real hard last night with a tornado. And we're thinking about, I almost tripped there. Yeah, El Reno got hit pretty hard last night apparently. And uh, right now, so far, they have two confirmed dead. So our thoughts and prayers are with the families there in uh, El Reno, Oklahoma, which, just, which is just on the other side of Oklahoma City. Anyway, we've got a bunch of kids coming today, don't we, dear? Yes, this is our youngest birthday. Yeah, and you were just reminding me that our youngest child is now... 36. <sighs> Which means we are 56. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wouldn't that be great? <laughs> I am. <laughs> oh, shoot. Well, it's a very young mother. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, we've got a, uh, a lot of outings planned. To, well, we've got a lot of activities planned today yes. with the kids here. Well, we are cooking. We are uh, going to make a cake if my electricity holds up. It will. It will. We got that and, straightened out, and that's uh, what we're going to talk about in a minute. We're gonna. I'm gonna make a cake, and we're going to have uh, rigatoni and fettuccine and garlic bread and homemade ice cream. And it's all keto, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. This is a celebration. Keto doesn't count. <laughs> uh, so, in other words, Deb and I will be taking a little bit of extra medication yeah. today to keep our blood sugars in check. But we'll right? be kayaking a lot. But so we'll be doing a lot of exercising, we'll... yes. We're going to be out with the kayaks and everything. So that'll help. And, uh, <laughs> and what's neat, you know, we, we started kayaking first. Yes. And then what happened? And then my daughter got her youngest child a kayak. And then when we they came out and we all went to the lake, then they decided they needed kayaks. And then we decided we needed two bigger kayaks. So we gave our two little ones to our youngest son and his son, grandson, our grandson. And anyway, by the end of today, we will have... Eight or nine boats here. Yeah. Yeah. All together, about eight or nine boats here. And they just love to get out on the lake and, uh, well, you yeah, know. this is their favorite place. Oh, yeah. there's so many boats that there's a lot of waves and yeah. they like that. Yeah. So. All the boats that go by make all the big waves and everything. And they like to go out there and uh, uh, deal with the waves. Yes. That's what they love. <laughs> anyway. All right. Now to the subject at hand. Uh, something that uh, was a little concerning 
overnight, and I apologize. I know good and well. I haven't watched this yet, but I know good and well that we're going to be hearing some wind noise. But hey, it's it something is what that we it is, yeah, it is what it is, and it's something we got to talk about. Anyway, uh, we had another storm roll up in the middle of the night last night, around three o'clock or so. We were just sleeping away, and all of a sudden, we could hear telltale sounds that there was some wind developing, and so we got up and got dressed and got out and looked, because this time of the year, with all the nasty weather we've been having around us and all the devastating tornadoes, we are a little concerned, and we're not very far from the killer tornado they had in Golden City, Missouri, uh, just the other day, and Car SC, Carl Junction, Missouri, got hit real hard, and Jefferson City, of course, we're a ways from Jefferson City, Missouri, but... Uh, we have to be concerned about these things, you know. We have to watch out for this stuff. So we got up and, and uh, uh, stepped outside to look around. And, you know, it looked like everything was going to settle down. But shortly, well, actually what woke us up too also is we have an alarm on our clock that when the power goes off, it goes off. And then it lets us know that the power went off. So we got up and checked that out. And we thought, well, everything's fine because it came back on and everything was okay. Well, then later this morning, when we woke up, the power kept going off and on, off and on, off and on, off and on. So we got to thinking, okay, what the heck is going on here? And of course, since we had an issue with electrical uh, problems with our motorhome and just about burned to death because of a faulty 12-volt uh, circuit in the motorhome, uh, we, uh, we started checking real quick. And I have lots of fail-safe fuses and breakers, extra fuses and breakers, and uh, all kinds of different devices in the trailer to protect us in case anything like this happens. But uh, what was baffling was the power kept going off and on, off and on. None of the breakers inside the trailer were blowing. Uh, nothing was, nothing else was happening. So I went and asked a neighbor, you know, did you have issues with your power going off and on? And they said no. So I was trying to figure what the heck could it be? Because first I thought maybe just the power to the whole park was going off and on for some reason that they had an issue. Uh, we did have service maintenance come a few days ago and work on this service pole. And the main reason why they had to come and work on the service pole, which wasn't really affecting us at the time, but for some reason this 20 amp receptacle here was bad. Uh, it wouldn't make any power. So we happened to tell them one day, hey, you know, it's not affecting us because we have uh, 50 amp service and this is where we're plugged in here. Uh, it doesn't affect us at all, but we thought we'd like, you'd like to know that the 20 amp side doesn't work. So they sent some maintenance guys out and they replaced the receptacle, tried it, and it still didn't work. So then they had to go back in and work on it again. Anyway, I was in at work that day and Deb kept sending me texts back and forth to let me know what was going on. But, of course, when they did that, when they worked on the pole, of course, they unplugged the 50-amp service to the trailer. And they were the ones that plugged it back in, and I didn't really pay, pay any attention to it. When I got home that evening, everything was working fine, no big deal, you know, and we just went on about our business. Well, uh, we had a little bit of a power, power issue a couple nights ago where the power kicked off and then it kicked back on, but it was also during a, a little bit of a thunderstorm and rain and I didn't think about it again. I just figured it had something to do with the storm and someone else might be getting hit a lot harder than we are and that could cause the problem. But when it started happening again this morning, over and over, I mean, just ever a few seconds, it would come on, then it would go off, come on and then it would go off. None of the breakers were blowing. Everything else seemed to be fine. Everything seemed to be fine in the trailer. I started tracing everything down. Nothing uh, looked out of the ordinary in the trailer itself. And I'm fortunate in that respect because I'm the one that wired this entire trailer, so I know exactly where to look. And I had a lot of help from uh, relatives who are uh, licensed electrical contractors. So I wasn't really concerned, but I thought, well, I'm gonna check that first. Then I thought, well, I'll come out and take a look at the service pole right quick. You know, maybe there's a weak breaker. Maybe it's not making good contact. Maybe when they put everything back together, they didn't uh, they didn't make sure that the contacts were 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 good and solid. You know, on the the 50 amp breaker uh, right here, which is the one that powers our outlet here. So I got to looking at that. Everything seemed to be looking fine. And then, <laughs> which is what I should have done in the first place. I reached over here and I looked at this and I could wiggle it. I could wiggle it. Then I noticed that it wasn't plugged completely in and I was able to push it another eighth to a quarter of an inch into 
into the receptacle here. So what we figure most likely what had happened was they didn't get it plugged in real good and it I should have checked this I should have double checked this when I got back but they didn't plug it in real good and tight and and what was happening when we had the little bit of rain and stuff and see another issue that we have I'll unplug this right quick and show you something another issue we have we can't close that lid completely now if you got a 30 amp plug and all depends on the design of your 30 amp plug sometimes you can go ahead and close that completely but we can't because of the way this plug sticks out. So, anyway, we figured that most likely some moisture was getting in behind that. I did pull it back out when I saw what was going on here. And yeah, the, 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 uh, the uh, blades were a little damp. Cleaned them off, put it back in, put it all the way in like it was supposed to be. And everything's fine. Everything's working just fine. So, a little bitty thing like that kind of sent us into a spiral for just a little bit a little concern but uh so far everything is great uh no other issues at all so uh that's what we're going to run with is that so it looks like everything is going to be fine we'll keep you posted if anything else happens down the line what i'm considering and someone might uh might uh, tell me if this is okay to do this since we can't shut the lid completely what would be wrong with taking a larger trash bag when we know it's going to be raining and stuff what would be wrong with uh, slipping a trash bag over this and kind of drawing it tight around the bottom to help keep moisture out of it whenever we have rain? I'm just curious about that. If anybody has any uh, suggestions on that, I would appreciate, uh, appreciate some comments about it. But uh, everything else is uh, working fine. Now we get to do something real fun, don't we? Yes, we're going to go dump the tanks and we're going to go dump our tanks. Yeah. And we're also going to pick up some more fresh water to refill our tank, which is something we're going to be talking about in another video down the road, yes. right? Yeah, I'll briefly go into it and we'll show you how the system works. I haven't got it fine-tuned to perfection yet, haven't got it set up exactly the way I want it. But uh, what we're planning on doing, well, what we've already done, we bought a 35-gallon fresh water tank at Tractor Supply for $100, right? Yes. And then uh, we bought a 12-volt transfer pump and uh, now all we have to do when we're while we're out and we wash our hands two or three times during this process <laughs> so so <laughs> to make sure there's no cross contamination but while we're out dumping the tanks we also take time to run by a water spigot and right now we're not close to a water spigot so we can't just run a hose over to one to top off our our tank and there's no water at the side at this campground so what we do is while we're out we go ahead and run by a water spigot we fill the 35 gallon tank and since our uh, our gray tanks are 10 and 22, that's 32 gallons when they're full. So 35 seemed like the right amount, you know, right size of tank. I could have got a larger one that was 65 gallons, but Deb wouldn't let me do it. Well, I didn't want stagnant water. I didn't want stagnant water in there. Well, that's true. That's true. Anyway. He keeps telling me I have to speak up in case you're wondering why I'm repeating myself. Well... I'm just concerned because I know we're going to hear I don't wind noise. Myself. <laughs> <laughs> You're not that old. No. <laughs> anyway, folks, that's what we're uh, that's what we're doing, and it's just a little thing there. I thought we'd show you right quick because uh, it was a little concerning. Everything is working fine. Uh, I'm 99.99 percent positive that that was the issue, and uh, that's where I should have looked first. I know that now. That's where I should look first. But still, it's always best when you have something like that come up to look at every possible scenario first. You know, look at every single possible scenario because you never know, you know, when something could be awry. Uh, the answer was the simplest one, the most logical one, but you don't know that until you trace everything down. So that's what we did. So anyway, I guess that's enough for now. Right? Yes. Yeah. And remember, we're not camping. We're, we're living. living. Yeah. So this is Bill and Deb with I Ride Tiny House Adventure saying goodbye for now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye now.